No, you love it. I don't love That's it. That's a great theory. It's not. Arson, ice pick is cold. I mean, it's better than Garen, but... Yeah, that's because Garen was quickly disproven. Disprove this one, bitch. What up, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. I'm Nate. Joining me, as always, is this guy, my brother, uh, Zach... Hey, brother. Sheboygan. Don't hate brother, me, you <laughs> fucking tool. We like to read A Song of Ice and Fire here. Nate likes to sit here and do nothing, and I talk about it and say cool stuff. And I agree. Right. He's useful. If you joined us last episode, we were reading Davos 3. Uh, Davos had a nice chat with the Red Priest. We are a full spoiler reread podcast. Oh, fuck off. And so this is your one and only warning. So last episode, we were reading Davos 3. Yeah, do it. No, and do Davos it. was in his jail cell in Dragonstone, where some weird shit seemed to be happening. The walls were all warm, warmer than they ought to be, which wasn't really weird. It's Dragonstone. But he was visited by Melisandre, really? and it was a fucking deep talk. Got very personal. Hashtag deep. Um, but she left, you know. <laughs> I don't. We went into the the conversation. Yeah, that one, well, that's so. Davos. We're not reading Davos. We're reading John. Right. So you know, fuck transition. Last we left Johnny Boy. John was at the Fist of the First Men yeah. with the Wildlings, Mance Raider and his crew, and basically got called on his shit as to whether or not he was going to start helping because Mance Raider would not hesitate to cut out his fucking tongue, and. Mance sort of, re- uh, not revealed, realized uh, as he grit was insistent that they had been fucking. And Mance sort of said, oh, who is it? To me, to split apart two lovers. So he decided that they're both going with Jarl and Steer south of the wall. South of the wall. Climbing that motherfucker. And it's very reflective of this journey that Bran is making north of the wall. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, north to the wall, rather. Yeah. And... This is also taking place shortly after Samwell's first chapter, Seems which so. was the Fist of the First Men being overrun by the White Walkers. So, with that, we're reading John 3 this episode. The cave fuck. It's a fuck fest. It's a fuck fest. It's just a fucking fuck fest. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a not exactly extensive chapter to go through with this one as yeah. pretty much what you see is what you get but we do get some fun fun points here uh mainly immediately john sort of starts noting the differences between him and egret yes that they note even the constellations are different in the sky and he's basically here trying to talk himself out of this interest he has in her he's saying like how could we ever be this when we can't even look in the sky and see the same thing it, it would never work but which is silly to think you know obviously yeah he's in, way too hard on himself it's a here. fantasy world like, first of all and so we got to remember that he's he's restricted to what he knows and what he's learned and it's not acceptable we as the reader know there's nothing fucking wrong here like yeah. you found a chick that you dig like, she's cool as shit. She's attractive. She's a little crazy. She's a little crazy, but that's why she's cool well, as well, shit. Like, obviously, like, Don, John digs the crazy. Uh, and so, they even differ as far as how they met. Egret claims that he stole her, and he's like, no. Under the constellation of the thief. Right. Which is why he it was the best night to steal her. Yeah. And she makes the comparison because he says, I didn't mean to steal you, though. I didn't know you were. I was going to kill you, but I saw you were a woman. And she goes, well... Just because a man doesn't intend to kill a man, he's still dead or some shit like that. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't write the quote down, but <laughs> it was. We, uh, yeah, that there. John is fixated on the differences, trying to remind himself of why he shouldn't. When every ounce of him wants to, clearly, and so he leaves the caves full of the fence and goes out to find ghosts. And so he also mentions that she's very stubborn when he's trying right. to. Ugh. Uh, Point out the differences and how they're the same right, things and all that. And she hear that he no. didn't steal her that night. That and it was so him. he says that he's reminded of Arya, Ew. his sister. Yeah. But by the stubbornness, right, right, right. I mean, but any time it always reminds me. It always, reminds me. It always like, just because of the, me back. It's not even canon shit. Who gives a fuck what int- he intended? Like 
it's just seeing that that stubborn side of her, and he's like, "Oh, Arya," but then he's like. But is she is she even my sister anymore? Because of his, you know, giving up his vows and taking the vows in the first place. And then he thinks, was she ever wrecked? Dude, fuck off. Go fuck off, Jon Snow. You, She was your fucking sister. Even if it was half-sister, she's not his sister whatsoever. He's still fucking siblings with those kids. Fuck you. Well, I mean, yeah. like It's, it is heartbreaking. it's like, in the heartbreaking. Well, the, right. He's just shitting on himself this entire chapter. His angst is... Just fucking on full, yeah, full bear full. this this entire chapter. And so, yeah, he leaves this cave of the fens, goes out to find Ghosty Boy, <gasps> and finds him atop a hill, as he thought he might. Because though he is silent, Ghost still likes to go up and sit on his haunches and look up at the moon. So I think it also is, again, he's dropped my notebook. He's also selling himself short as a warg, because he's like, I don't. I'm supposed to be a warg. They call me that, but I can't skin change. You know where the fuck Ghost is. I think that he knows where Ghost is. Mm. That's not because Ghost just happens to go. Yeah, that, but because you know Ghost, because you're the, you share minds. You're so close that you're just a different kind of warg that hasn't developed his abilities. That's all. Yeah, I mean, but, like, what the fuck does John have to go on that would point him any differently? Like... He doesn't he, like this whole chapter is him casting doubt on his well, I'm not dark hair. Well, that, 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 just not playing that, like, it's just, just playing it's, devil's it's advocate. It's heartbreaking here. that he sells himself so short. So all the goddamn always. Well, right. It's in every single aspect that he. This right. was what he was ordered to do: live among them and infiltrate them. Obviously, you fucking Corn Halfhand knew you were probably going to have to fuck a wildling girl at some point. To right. prove that you were willing to, and worse than just fuck a wildling girl, to probably prove that you are against the Night's Watch now. And so, yeah, it sucks, but, I mean, it's teenage angst. We've all been yeah. there where all, everything I'm doing is wrong, and it sucks. And so he asks if Ghost has names for the stars as well, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, and he lists through some of them, just like She-Wolf and Rabbit or Hare and just those types of Things that would make sense, but again, I think that's showing how close their bond really is. That those are likely the phrases and terms he would think in and would be naming them after. So maybe, but John does when they have to part. That he can't yeah. go with him over the wall, and so he basically tries to do the go. You gotta go back to Castle Black. Go home, boy. Aria. Go Aria. home, boy. And. That's where John thinks that he's not a very good warg, as right. he was able to see the dream once that led them to Mance's camp. But other than that, he really hasn't had much luck. But Ghost bounces off anyway, and so, John. Yeah, John says that we must hunt alone for a time. Yeah, alone. And Hi. That, like poor Ghosty man, but it's Ghost only for a short time because he gets shit. He, he goes and like finds uh, Sam and everything. I wanted to point out that moment there with Ghost uh, being sent away, just how reminiscent that is of not just Arya, as I kind of yelled out a minute ago, where she sent away her wolf, but almost in a way also of Bran sending Rickon away. Yeah, Bran and Rickon. And, yeah. like, sending Rickon and Shaggy Dog away. And so all the siblings, and almost, I suppose, even in a sense, Rob sending Theon away. Because um, Rob, in a sense, thought of him as a brother until he turned into fucking cunt Theon. So but... knowing what we know, that Jon Snow sent not having Ghost at his side <gasps> is terrible for him Yeah. Uh, in the future. It just makes me re-examine these when he sends him away. Just these, like, is there something that can only happen now to Jon? That if, right, and because so, they're apart. Yeah, so these next couple of chapters, I'm, I'm going to be scrutinizing heavily his climb over the wall, whether or not there's a shift or a change in John. because, full spoiler, he, he's stabbed in the fucking heart when Ghost is basically locked, or I can't recall in the book specifically if Ghost where Ghost is and isn't available for John to be saved by, but it's just this... These dire wolves. We know the significance of these kids being separated from these wolves. And right. So is it? John is sort of losing a little bit more of that Stark hits the Ned Starkness and leaning more toward a wildling. It's a interesting thing to, yeah, yeah. I think start developing. I here. I feel like this 
that that he could be the one exception to this rule with his split heritage with the Targaryen Stark. That because he's half dragon, he can spend some time apart, and that is a good thing for Samwell, obviously, because Ghost goes and helps him fuck shit up for a bit, I believe. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it'll be fun to see it. Play John out thinks again. that he wishes he knew where Ghost was running off to. He hopes it's the Wall, of course, but thinks that he's as bad a warg as he is a spy, which. Again, like you're doing exactly as you were asked. Exactly. You haven't really learned like the the crux crux. You haven't seen a horn of winter or anything yet. So like you're still gathering intel. You're still doing what you're supposed to be doing. And yeah, again, it's just his angst. But he takes sort of a educated guess that they would be somewhere between the shadow tower, the shadow tower in Castle Black by this point. Yeah. And kind of recalls being back at the fist and thinks that he should have killed Mance Raider then and there. It's what Kor and Halfhand would have done. Yeah. Again, he's... I, I Corrin really, knew what needed to be done. Right. Corrin died so that what could be done is being done. Is whatever decision you decide is the correct one at that time. And the fact that he's so torn, like, is clearly a good thing. It's That's why Corrin trusted him to say, kill me. I need to get right, you yeah. over with them, so... Well, right, yeah, this whole angst that John's having is exactly why Corrin picked him as well. Right, He right. knew John would struggle with this because inherently... He wants John to do the right thing. John is a decent guy, yeah. And so, but John had hesitated in the moment, it passed, and then suddenly he was riding with Steer the Magnar and Jarl and more than 100 Then Riders, and here they are. He could never really find a moment to slip away, as the Jarl watched him suspiciously. Indy Grit was, of course, never far day or night, because she likes that D. Damn. damn. And when he and Indy Grit first had fucked, he pro- promised himself that it was... He was only playing a role. I'm just filling a role. But his body performed it eagerly enough. Yeah, we know. You can't blame the fucking kid. Like, it, again, as you said, there's nothing wrong occurring here. They're both consenting adults. It's just John's right. honor and it vows and And angst. he, funny enough, says, I'll never do that again. It was a one-time thing. Even Ned Stark, my father, had one incident. And was wondering if that's how his father felt, which, again, is... A little strange, but, you know. No, I mean, in the, especially in the bastardy that John's lived in, it makes sense for him. Of, no, I know. I did he feel this fun. same shame as he laid there after the, as it's called on the internet, uh, the post-nut clarity? Mm-hmm. Did you just lay there and kind of be like, oh, fuck, what did I do? Yeah, it was kind of that until it happened two more times and then again in the morning. Right. And he, like, again, we've said it. Once in front of the waking wildlings and John wonders if that's what he's become no more than a fucking dog. Rooting Just, in the, yeah. in, under the, the sheepskins. Yeah, right. And I think that he's just playing the part better than he expected because he I think he he's thrives. A, he's he's a, enjoying it. I think it. He's, he's a young kid who finally has a young female who's reciprocating right. attraction and his body's doing what his body does because he's attracted to her and they're both hormoned the fuck up and so yeah they're going at it wildlings are open egret is obviously i would say initiating most of the continued fucking here as right. john says he's laying there thinking it's never going to happen again I would imagine that he's not suddenly like oh, hey let's go again he does mention that it's the refusal from himself goes away when she does little things. Well, right, I, I, I'm talking that, about here yeah, yeah, specifically, this first one. though. And, and so it is interesting to see so the like, growth from him, the the growth attachment. It like, knows what she wants, and, you know, it's okay with the wild things to kind of fuck in the open where people can see because, right. oh, they're fucking. That's what... People Man, yeah. who you know are attracted it's, it's to each other. It's technically expected do, right. of them, right? And it, and that's why they're like, "Hurry up and finish, or else we need to." And end so it this for is you. world point of view again. John sees it as no better than animals when the wildlings are like, "Yeah, just fucking get your gear on in like ten minutes because we're moving the fuck out. Like, get your shit together and finish up." And so it's just it's purely that, and it's yeah, it sucks that this relationship because i do like this relationship i think john and Grit are great for each other i think yeah, she yeah, yeah. certainly pushes him where he needs to be pushed but uh we learn here that john is wanted by the the magnar and right. so the heads back to the cave and jarl and steer were both given shared command which neither is really happy at with all. at all 
and so John kind of files that away. The Jarl was called uh, a pedophile, which is Dalla's sister, Vance's, Mance's wife's sister's pet. Something like that. Yeah, yeah you've fucking gotta... Christ. Which sort of makes him a good brother to Mance Raider. So he's kind of brother to the king. Yay. <laughs> so right. Magnar wants to know all John knows about the watch patrols. And John explains the basic procedure yeah, that they walk the walls. And then this is where we get the excellent tale of Arson Icepick. Right, man. Horrifying. Whoo! So Arson was a wildling who was going to pick his way through the tunnels, or tunnel his way through the wall. Yeah, fuck it. And he was doing a damn good job until he was found out, yeah. and they collapsed the tunnel. On they him. just sealed it. They didn't collapse it. They just sealed. They it collapsed the it end with of rock it and, and ice, stuff, but. but Dolores yeah. says uh, Dolores Ed says that you can still hear his pick going if you put your ear up Ugh. against the wall. There's so many dead people said to be in the fucking so wall. So many dude. dead people. I don't like it. I like it. But I mean it's pretty sweet. And yeah, when he asks how many men remain, John ends up adding 300 to the final count, which immediately is called for the bullshit that he is unless he says he's adding the fist from the first men, which they're dead. We they're know dead, it. and we know they're dead. And John basically so, is threatened with fucking tell me the truth. You lie, or I'll fucking have your tongue. So, I have a new theory, and it's a good one. Arson Ice Pick made his way out, and he is cold hands. Cold hands. Arson fucking Ice Pick is cold hands. Confirmed. I anyway. hate you. No, you love it. I don't love That's it. That's a great theory. It's not. Arson, ice pick is cold. I mean, it's better than Garen, but... Yeah, that's because Garen was quickly disproven. Disprove this one, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I hate you. Uh, Dismissed after being threatened to have his tongue cut out, John heads off to find Egret, which, after walking through some camp, he does. Uh, Uh, Can I just want to... Sorry, not to... Yeah, he never says anything, and then he gets offended when I try to say something. Excuse fucking me. John has been very he's been back talking to them very much wildling esque standing up for himself and the only thing that keeps him from really pressing his luck is he knows that they will kill Egret as well and not just him because they're together at this point. Yeah yeah yeah. And so I thought that was just important to note that he's heavily influenced by the fact that not by himself being in danger, by her being put in danger at his expense. And that's why he backs down. So I just you know, he's thought so, that was kind of... He's so dreamy. He's so selfless. I swooned for him. I thought you were going to hit me with a I'm, mouse. No, oh, Jesus. So he does find Egret in a small little hidden cave with a waterfall and a very dark pool. I love this setting, but it also slightly horrifies me. Uh, the dark pool, I don't know if I could be getting in that. Uh, I don't really like They're warm, deep, hot dark pools. water. I, because he asked where she went, and she says that she went and walked back like 100 paces, and it was a dead end. And so she made her way back. And you just talked about how horrified this all seems. I have this bad habit lately of watching these videos of people doing some cave you know delving. some some spelunking some Ugh, cave diving yeah, but it's like the tight Ew. tight Ew, yeah, caves yeah, yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, yeah. old mine shafts and like Ugh. yeah those people have balls of steel. yeah man i don't get it's, how they could do it like it's it's just a it's something that i that's would, what i mean i would panic like getting here like having to squeeze through like a little thing of rock yeah, yeah, would yeah. freak me out so like it's something i would love to do but i never ever ever will and then the way the the pool is described is like the torch that's flickering it makes it look black yeah like, how deep is that pool what's in that <laughs> pool what lives in there this is a fucking deep dark cave with literally no light in it ever except for this fucking torch that we have what's in that pool if i can't see the bottom i ain't going in sorry not sorry, but we get the awesome. There's hundreds tale. of caves in these hills, and there's even a way under the wall through these underground right. caves. Gorn's way, way, yeah. The and story, of course. Which uh, these stories lately that we're getting with the Stark children, Bran and uh, yeah, John, yeah. this education of other the wall events. people of uh, things happening around the wall right. specifically uh well 
not so much the night of the laughing so, tree. So, well, right, that. right. Sort of specific, those possibly important future details. Do you do think you, Gorn's way will be a vital we, component uh, at I, some point? Sure. And now this isn't because he goes through what fucking the shadow tower. He goes underneath Sam. Sorry, goes under and Bran. They is that where that one is? is the the tunnel? Sh- I think it is the shadow um, tower. Yeah, and so. I feel part of me is wondering if that's if, not Gorn's way, the if, werewood door. No, maybe. Or if Gorn's way isn't uh, arson ice picks, ice axes tunnel. You know, maybe they're just screwing up the stories. They're the same story, and he did make it through, and there's a whole tunnel about it. And or eh. he would. Well, I guess it would be two different actual people, so that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I I think that it could be that that tunnel, but. We'll have to pay attention during branch chapters in Sam's. Well, I mean, that yeah, because that one's, to... they go down, down under the night fort, if right. I recall. And so, yeah, and that one could at least hold some merit. But Gorn was king beyond the wall with his brother Grendel 3,000 years ago. They led the free folk under the wall, but Winterfell came upon them, and Gorn slew the king in the north, but was then slain by the king in the north's son. And then the crows rode out to take them in the rear. So Grendel was forced to retreat to these caves, but didn't know them as Gorn did, and took a wrong turn, and fell deeper and deeper. And Grendel's folk were never seen again, but on still nights it's said that you can still hear them sobbing and starving. Fuck you, Egret. Yeah, that's messed up. That's terrible. That's, you know, telling the scary story in the graveyard to, like, fuck with people, and I don't like it. I'm not down (laughs) for that, because I'd be the one who'd start listening for sobbing, and then if I heard a fucking pebble drop, I'm out. And so, like, thanks, Egret. Thanks for that. But, uh... Yeah, Gendel Gendel and his children rumored to still live down there is one of the the scarier things to me. Yeah, they're fucking... Um, That's horrifying. Because it makes me think of... What the fuck is the name of the the descent? Is uh-huh. that it? With the the, the, the creatures that are in there. People. That's it. It's yeah. them. Um, because we also get the Rat King story about the wall and creatures living around this. And so there's just the wall's a fucked place, man. <laughs> yeah, it's dark. And uh, apparently this story is enough to get them going because they start a fooling. This is where the Lord's Kiss conception comes up, which Jon Snow just knows what that tongue does. This and is also they bring up Craster. The first time they physically see each other, oh, right. nude yeah, as right. well, which is again another significant moment for these kids, these these uh, consenting adults, you know, to see each other in that kind of exposure to each other. It's very revealing. Yeah, I mean, I mean as a... much as it's a little bit gratuitous, it is. I mean, it's cutesy. It's it's like they are a good couple, and uh, but then yeah, eventually. Talk turns to Craster, and Egret says just the interesting line I thought of. Craster's more your kind than ours. His blood is black, and he bears a heavy curse. And that's in reference to him sacrificing children to, to the, the others. Yeah, right, probably. And so even the fucking wildlings well, are like, yo, Cra- fuck Craster. Like, he's a curse. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Yeah, we don't associate with him. He's so yours. even Craster is deplorable. And right, he's the one who, like, they're like, no, 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 he's not one of us. No, no, no. He's not one of us. So poor Craster. Not poor Craster. Craster's just neutral. Fuck Craster. Fuck, fuck Craster. Craster. Yeah, no, not poor Craster. And then they fuck again, but his guilt came back after this one, but weaker than it was before. Right. So they start to get dressed. That fails. They fool around again. Fall back in the pool. Go at it. Man, and then she, she makes the request that they... Let's just stay the fuck here forever with Grendel. Join, Gendel, join Gendel. Gendel's children. Child. Ew. I mean, Why granted, are you disgusting? Now, granted, there could be the potential that Gendel's children are just children of the forest, yeah. and they live in the wall, and it's just this lost, you know, you got dwarf forest gnomes, you've got cave gnomes, you could have forest children of the forest, right. and you've got cave children of the forest. there's also the potential that the there's others scary, demonic are other fucking Santa Claus in this universe, but... I um, highly fucking doubt that's the case that they're coming to deliver fucking toys and presents with a sack of treats. And so, no, I don't. I This is scary. This is fucking horrifying. And I don't feel I feel like this for some reason. This to me screams Kyburn's area like more people being mutated by effects of the land and and that sort of like I feel like. Gendel's children would be people that Kyburn would 
fucking love to get his hands on and poke and prod. I don't know, and man. I don't know why it just it feels like similar in that vein as far as what he does with Robert Strong and all that fun jazz that this one's weird. This one creeps me out a lot more than the other uh, some of the other stories Good. in this series. I don't like getting those. You deserve that. But Egret says she wants to stay. She never wants to leave, and it's cutesy, and that's the chapter end. A very short, other than the fucking. Succinct. And, uh, yeah, not too much to dive into. John feels guilty very much so about betraying his oath, about fucking this girl, right. about potentially fathering a bastard is one of his concerns because he's a bastard. Bastard. Well, and then we get the terrifying story of Gendel. Which is a very cool story. It's a lot of, like, because it just, again, we, it's giving these, con- even if the story itself is exaggerated. Right, which it probably is. We do learn that there are cave systems and tunnels throughout these, and they go miles deep. The the potential for all sorts of right, shit to right. be down there, whether it be monster demon Gendel children or lovely children of the forest right. children, then there's a whole fucking or un- just un- pathways that make it accessible to get under the wall. Right, like, like it's as simple as that. Like who, who it, knows? That could be huge if the others know about that. If the others are able to follow Gendel's path, if Gendel's children are. Influenced by the others, potentially, if and they're able to be. Because that then starts leading all sorts of questions. Like, where do they come out? Up in well, the right. mountains? Are there those ones? Is there ones that come? What's Somewhere the, in the gift. What's the little I horse town that they go to just outside of the. Barrow Town. Barrow Town, that's what I was thinking. Barrow something town. like that. Uh, um, yeah, it's some, it'd have to be somewhere in so. the gift or the new gift, I would say, that those tunnels would come out if they went basically straight to Winterfell after emerging from Maybe them. there's one that goes straight to Winterfell. That'd be it's in the fucking crypts. We know how. Well, that's it. We don't know. We know well, the like how far goes reaching, deep, right? Deep, so there could be fucking caves that reach all the yeah, way to yeah. Landing for all the fuck we know. Whoa, that's 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 a little. That's a, that's pretty. That's a bit much. I think it's the Cthulhu fucking monsters tentacles that live at the center of the core of Planetos. Oh. That, that makes these caves. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. That's where we're going. You got an Let, inductee for this? Let's go. Oh, we got to do a small council, council yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. All right. You got fucking mind warped by Cthulhu, apparently. Heavy sigh. Nate's being dumb. You're being dumb <laughs> and rude. It's absolutely asinine. This is a small council. Thank you for joining us. Where Nate's dumb. I'm being pretty dumb sometimes. Anyway, do you have an inductee? For this lovely chapter of f- fuck festing. Yeah, mine's going to be festing for the story and the control. Like, not the control, but like, she's just fucking, she's into it, man. She likes John and she's she going gets what for she wants. it. Yeah, like, she's just, no bones about it. Fuck it. I want this and it mine. And then she even, like, gives him some praise, like, for, because the conception of the Lord's kiss comes up and, like, <laughs> She's like, yo, how'd you do that? Is, that? is that normal? No, it's not normal? Well, damn, boy. And so, you know, I like Egret a lot. And I think that this is a... As much as it's not a lot happening, it does help solidify and make her death matter and us understand why Wait, it matters she dies? to John. Spoiler alert. Yeah, we did the... the oh, yeah, you right. did it, remember? Because you yeah. were all fucking proud you remembered something for once. That's true. So, Egret... Nice. You got an inductee? Yes. A little inductee? I have an inductee. Inductee. And it is Ghost. Ghosty. Ghosty oh, boy. Ghost. Silent boy. Uh, he is a silent boy. He's such a sweet good boy. I know. And just the the image, it's funny because it's literally the bane of my existence. One of those wolf t-shirts with the wolf sitting on the, the cliff precipice right. howling at the moon. Without the howling, just sitting there majestically. And just seeing Ghost and and John up and up there talking, and the comfort, it's and it's the goodbye, sad. it's so sad. And you know who know I forget when his when he actually comes back, and so I don't know when the next chance to actually we have to hunt alone for a while when we actually get to see him again is. So I'm bringing our our goodest boy Ghost into the Brotherhood. Yeah, Ghosty, Ghosty, Ghosty. Well. Ooh. Hello, stomach's doing things. Don't, don't, don't. We did do get that. some inductees from our listeners. Uh, starting off here with Julian, our favorite French fry, says he, for his inductee, he would like to induct Gendel. Badass kid made it through the crows and had the worst possible death ever. You know nothing, Valar Pitch Black Eris. 
Thanks, Julian. Uh, God, Grendel's so fucking creepy, but in an, uh, in one of those fun, let's go walk around uh, spooky woods and tell each other scary stories to scare each other away. Yeah, and so we also received an inductee from the lovely Karen, and she wrote in about, you know, how sad she is also about John and Arya. The Aria thing, man, mm-hmm. and how sad that is. It's, it is. And then the ghost goodbye. Um, she's also upset, as we were t- talking about, that he takes it so angstfully. It's all upon himself. But her inductee, Gendel's children. Man, why you gotta let them come in right, all up so in this Kendall stuff? Gendel and his children. Right, now they're in the Riverlands. Wonder. So they are hungry and need to see some light. And I bet they have the best stories. Hopefully they're those kind, that we can sit around a campfire and they're like the Lost Boys from Hook, and we can all just like, Lost Boys, and have a food fight, and it's going to be great. I'm more picturing the youngest son from us. Don't. The way he crawls around terrifyingly. That's good. That's yeah. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you, Karen. You're so lovely. We appreciate it for the inductee. Um, we also want to mention our friends over on the Patreon, Uh Kristen is new in there, yep. um, and then we got a, Brittany wrote in. Yeah, um, uh, a great message from Brittany there as well. We are reading. We read everything you guys send, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that 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 does it for John three, Johnny Boy three. It was yeah, a nice a short good. short one. Uh, next chapter though. Next chapter though, Ooh. we're gonna be bringing it, throwing it back over to our main girl Daenerys. In the Plaza of Pride. She's burning shit down. Uh, shit's about to explode. Fuck yes. Into fire and blood. Yo, I'm so hyped for this fucking episode. And yeah, this, this chapter, chapter is a fucking doozy. It's just a goddamn great one from start to finish. Mm. Uh, mm. So join us for that. Send us inductees for that. We do have those of you that have already sent them to our email, as is your usual. We We've do have those. We have you marked and ready to be read. But there are some of you that haven't sent right, them yet. But right, we so. uh, always have room for more because we love hearing from you guys, your Ooh. inductees, or just your thoughts and feelings on the chapter, and we try to get those succinctly out. Uh, you may have noticed that we've stopped reading full emails just to try to condense and make sure that there's space for everybody to get some something to say and get an inductee in. Yeah, uh, they, they've announced, just because, I mean, we're here towards the end of the episode, the new House of the Dragon uh, photos have been released, new cast members. They yep. look fucking sick. There's uh, a little bit of angst going around uh, about some of them, but fuck we're the not angst. even going to bring it nope. up because it's absolutely nope. fucking insane. Get and the cast yourselves. looks amazing. Right. Looking forward to yes. it. Even, I know, like, I can... I can understand, like, if people are upset about how the wigs look, shit like that. I don't know enough about that shit. I think that all of it's fucking grand slamming, man. And so I'm pretty excited for that. Pretty Uh, fucking excited. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, I really didn't have any hype for House of the Dragon until I saw some of the set photos. And now, like, like, just seeing the... Targaryenness yeah. is like, all right, all right, yeah. you know what? I might be down for another show. And it's so, really sweet. you know, we're also adults about the final season of the show and able to enjoy you know, what we enjoyed about enjoy it. Enjoy what and... we enjoy and laugh at the bits that were rushed and goofy and, uh, all the angst about the House of the Dragon thing is just something that, yeah, I don't really want to fucking talk about it because it just, sense. what are you even doing? Just please shut your mouth about yeah. it. Thanks. Uh, uh, I look, I think that Martin's going to be making an announcement. I don't think it'll be, you know, this month, no. next month. But I'm really expecting that. You know, shout out I'm to George R.R. R. Martin because I, like, Jesus, there's a lot of fucking bullshit being tossed around around his death. And, like, that's just so fucking uncool to say, man. Like... Yeah. Let the dude enjoy his time and write his fucking story. And if we don't get to read it, I enjoyed the books we got to read from him, and he owes us literally nothing. And so... Go fuck off. Go fuck off if you're one of the ones saying, like, oh, he's going to die before we get to read it. Well, then I hope his life after he published these fucking books was great and fulfilling, and you enjoyed the books that we did get to read, because that's just the cuntiest of cunt things to say. So shout out to George R. R. Martin. Woo-hoo. Inspiration for the book podcast that we're now doing. Yeah. 
And thanks, listeners. Thanks, listeners. There's a little bit of Brotherhood <laughs> Ire for you at the end. Catch us on Danny3. If you want to write into us, it's right, going to uh, tell you everywhere you can Email do that. is withoutmannersbrotherhood at gmail.com, of course. You can find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash withoutmanners, I hope, because I haven't looked at the thing. It is. I'm correct. We're good. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash brotherhoodpodcast. There's a secret little network of our brothers and sisters. On Facebook, in the private group that you gain access to via the Patreon, we are uh, working on the next few episodes for Patreon, which is going to be the next part of the Duncan Egg series that Ah. we're doing. So exciting. It's going to be sick. So get on over there. You can find us on Twitter, at Manners Without, for me, Nate. Zach is over there sometimes, more often than he used to be, so I'll give him that at least. Uh, At Carstark92, we have the... What else? Did I forget anything? Leave us the re- reviews. You know, we have we like to hear your reviews. Even if they're not perfect, give us perfect ones. Even if they're not perfect, I make mean, sure they're all perfect. I mean, it's not perfect. I'm perfect. So, like, you know, we understand that if the bad reviews come <sighs> in, they're directed toward Nate. All right, Mr. Go- perfect. Where do they leave us reviews at? iTunes. Uh, that changed to Apple Podcasts like sure, a year yeah. and a half uh-huh. ago. So you can also go to Rate This Podcast. I know what I mean. Uh, RateThisPodcast.com mm-hmm. slash brotherhood. Mm-hmm. And you can straight up just pick whatever platform and place is best for you to do. It'll give you all the options there. But follow us on Spotify. Leave us reviews on you know, Stitcher and I don't know. I don't feel like listing them all off. Go to our website. You can just find them there. And that's brotherhoodwithout.com. I mean, you, can, you can find this podcast. You, We're around. You, then you can, if you're listening to this, then you know how to how to find that's true where story. to do stuff. So, uh, but what if this was their first ever and it was just randomly shared? We're ending this episode. Go fuck yourself, Zach. Vela to Harris. Peace.